Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, hope you guys are doing good again. Uh, once again, this week, um, we are now coming into, I believe, our seventh or maybe our eighth week of now gathering virtually. Um, never getting used to it, uh, but we are praying, hoping, and trusting that God is uh, keeping us and sustaining us, and hopefully we'll be able to meet together and have in-person gatherings pretty soon uh believe everybody knows me we've been doing this for a few weeks now so you're used to at least my face or my voice um so when i do these videos um anyone that it applies to great if it does not it's not supposed to i am speaking directly and specifically to junior high high school uh, youth and teenagers um, so I pray that this short time together would be glorifying to God um, on last week or a few days ago, had a few of the teenagers to um, kind of ask me to do something on relationship goals. Um, and I'm not going to go too far into that on today, but I would like to look at it from, uh, I guess, the, the lens of scripture in regards to uh, our direct relationship with God. And I'll start it off by just kind of saying it this way and not sure if you guys know this, but um, at one point in human history, God and man had a direct friendship, direct friendship with each other, while man and woman had no drama. Think about that. Think about how long that could have that could have been that man and woman had absolutely no drama at all. Let's let's unpack the true reality behind the relationship between God and man and then man and woman. You see, at one point in human history, there was no such thing as drama. No such thing in our relationships as drama. No baby mama drama. No baby daddy drama. There was no uh, jealousy, no catching feelings, no falling for a girl that wasn't supposed to be yours or falling for a guy that wasn't supposed to be yours. There were no trust issues. Uh, there were no lack of commitment issues or worrying about if somebody was going to ask you to prom or to homecoming. There was no issues of uh, self-respect or commitment or peer pressure to have sex or having false expectations or even having fear of a broken heart. It was none of that. None of that happened. God didn't have a problem with humans and humans didn't have a problem with God. Why? Because there was no sin. But then you see in Genesis chapter uh, 2 verses 27 through 25, I'm sorry, verses 7 through 25, it unpacks for us what our world looked like when it was completely drama free. Think about that for a second. We lived once in a world that was completely drama free. So before we unpack the reality of how did we get from there to here, let's understand what world that Adam and Eve existed in with great direct fellowship with God. So let's kind of look at the truth between God's relationship with Adam. You see, when God created him, Adam, he gave Adam a responsibility. He gave him a job. So the first thing we have to understand is that work is not a sin. The reality of work is that God, God, he's the one that gave Adam the responsibility to steward the creation that God created. So God gave Adam the responsibility to look after all cre creation. In addition to this, God told Adam that he needed a helpmate. You see, the first time in all of scripture where you see God says something that wasn't good, you have to go back to Genesis chapter one. And what you're going to see is God said, let there be and everything that was not did become. And God declared that all things created were good, including human beings. But the first time in all of scripture where God said something wasn't good is when man was alone. So what God did was he put Adam to sleep. And when he put him to sleep, he took a rib from Adam. And what the Bible says is that God fashioned a woman who would be a helpmate to Adam. Her name was Eve. And the first wedding in human history took place. And the truthful matter behind that is that one point in, again, our human history is that God Man and woman, all three had a direct relationship. God blessed the man and the woman. He gave them clear commands on what they were to do to maintain this perfect world. 
So what we see in Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, is beauty or the beauty of the relationship between the man and the woman who were Adam and Eve. There was no drama. She wasn't going through his text messages. He wasn't jumping in other girls' DMs. They weren't trying to impress people outside of their relationship. None of them worried about clothes or hair or makeup or how tall Adam was or how fine Eve was. Nobody was digging through each other's inbox asking, uh, hey, who is this trying to holler at you and hook up for some Netflix and chill? None of that was going on. They had no problems and no insecurities. Everything was well in their relationship. But then the Bible says that they were both naked and they were not ashamed. You see, the truth means or the truth of this is it's not the fact that they both didn't just um, not have clothes on and they were OK with it. Here's what it means. They didn't have fear of being exposed. That means they were doing no dirt on the side, had no side chicks, had no side dudes. Everything was well because everything was going in direct plan in the way God created things to be. And they obeyed God completely and totally. That direct, that direct relationship with God showed that there was no drama between the direct relationship between the man and the woman. Again, which was Adam and Eve. So now, as you look at your relationships in life, you got to think, how is that? That they have or they have that what they had, but I don't have that. Again, it's sin. But begin to ask yourself, am I contributing to the broken relationships around me? Is there any way that I can have direct relationship with God? But then how can I also have direct relationship with my other brothers and sisters in Christ? In the faith, through Jesus Christ. So as you work through these truths, take time to think through your own life. Think about all the broken relationships you've had. Who did you once have a direct relationship with that you no longer have? Is God included in that list? As you think through that, take what you're thinking and jot them down. Talk to God. You can DM me. You can inbox me. You can text me. Send me a message. Even ask your parents, how can you back be in direct relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ? And how can you be in direct fellowship with God.